Good afternoon everyone. With our sun and the current solar cycle 24 just one year post maximum, we're already returning down to almost zero sunspots. If this continues through the next week, you can expect a much, much cooler spring than usual. Right away, let's dive in. We're going to take a look today at record low temperatures across, I mean dropping like flies across the northern hemisphere. It seems just every locale, Canada, Northeast United States, Southeast United States, all breaking record temperatures above the 100-year mark. The height of the current solar maximum, solar cycle 24, occurred in April of 2014. The 10.7 centimeter flux shows a 30% drop in the last three months. Take a look at this chart here from NASA. You can see exactly what I mean. Now this will have to do with a decrease in the UV radiation, lower solar winds, which will allow more cosmic radiation to come in, which will affect the upper atmosphere, which will lead to greater cloud formation. Now when this happens, you're going to have some of the coldest months on record if this continues through the next week to two weeks. Spring will be the coldest spring you've ever experienced in your life. And take a look at what I mean about freezing cold, low temperatures, minus 21 Fahrenheit. I circled that with the blue around Vermont, New Hampshire, up in the northeast United States, Maine. This is what it looks like, satellite view from space. This is over Ohio and Pennsylvania, West Virginia. Record low temperatures on February 20th. All around Virginia, some of those records back to 1896. Again, that'll put us in 120 plus year range. This is another list here compiled of February 20th records broken. And if you look through there, 1888, really dropping back 1934, 1903, a couple of places, 1896 in Norfolk, Virginia. You'll start to see we're just dropping into this pattern of repeated cold weather. This is just the beginning. Next year will be colder than this year. So these records, when you see them next year being broken again, the news will not tell you that it was previously broken back to 1896. They'll just say, oh, it broke last year's temperature record. So make sure you delve in and try to see where the original records began when they start to compare because this is becoming a trend and they do not want you to put the pieces that this so-called hoax of global warming has stopped. Here's more temperature records. This is on the February 19th. Again, dive in, you'll take a look at 100 plus year records. Now Norfolk broke their record twice in two days, which is interesting. Now don't think that it's only in the Northeast United States. It's also extended up into Canada. Here we are in Ontario. They get brutally cold every single winter, but they broke a 116-year cold record. This is from Environment Canada. As you can see, records broken back to 1881. That's another 130-year cold record. A lot of these things, 1934, smashing back 1910. Another list from Environment Canada. And as we're looking into the north and the Arctic Circle, you can see the sea ice is returning. The only major place where it's not refilled itself is near Vladivostok off of eastern Russia there on the Kamchatka Peninsula. Otherwise, ice is pretty much returned as in past tense, returning ING, still going on. It is returning. It is refilling. The so-called ice-free Arctic that everybody was purporting in the loss of the polar bears. What are there, 25,000 polar bears now? There were 5,000 in 1970. And throughout my series of videos, I've been trying to equate the patterns of the little ice age cooling with what's going on currently in North America as a reference point along with Greenland. I found this really nice temperature reconstruction here on the global areas, including the southern hemisphere, which we don't often see. It's always in the North American or European areas referenced. The cold that's occurring right now, it just doesn't match the little ice age pattern. I, you know, I saw something before and I thought, where did I see that? And I jumped back and I looked and it was the actual last glaciation matches, not the little ice age. But take a look at the last glaciation. Greenland was incredibly cold, parts of North America, but Alaska remained warm and unglaciated, which exactly matches what we're seeing right now. So my question to you is... With all the anomalous events occurring, are we going into a small cooling or are we going to go into something grandiose that it seems a lot of governments around the planet have been planning for something major and drastic? The way all this money printing is going on, it doesn't seem that anything will ever be repaid. By the time we reach 2020 or so, we're going to be in dire straits with food production by then. 2025, there'll be global chaos. 2030, 
there'll be a 25 to 30 percent reduction in the world population and at that point nothing will ever be repaid so it makes sense to me print now prepare now who cares about repaying later because it doesn't matter there won't be enough people around to complain any longer I'll leave you with this amazing picture of a frozen spring in Letchworth State Park in New York I can't even really add comment to that that is nature at its finest thanks for watching hope you got something out of the video